Hey there, I'm Rangatz. This is a continuation of a demo video showing the making of a liquid clip-out texture. If you missed part 1, where I show how to paint this texture, click here. In this video, I'll go over how the shader, material, and particle system work to make this clip-out texture actually work. And here is the shader. So basically, here are the basic things. Um, down here, I am making a, uh, a spherical or a round mask um, using UV coordinates. Um, I offset them so that the center point is zero by subtracting 0 0.5 from both of the channels. Um, I square it, which is going to flip my negative numbers. Uh, so my negative x flips and my negative y flips. And I need to multiply that also by four to bring it back up. Um, I then add the x and the y together, or the r and the g, or the u and the v, depending on how you want to think about it. Um, anyway, I add those together, uh, clamp it, because the values in the corner are well above 1, uh, then I 1 minus it, and I set that as my mask. Um, up here, uh, I have my UV coordinates, um, I have pan U and V, and tile U and V. Uh, these both get appended so that they can be uh, brought into my texture coordinates. Uh, the pan get appended, multiplied by time, and added to my UV coordinates. The tile get appended and then multiplied into my UV coordinates. And here, uh, in my particle system, I am feeding a random value per particle down the Z value of the uh, custom vertex. Uh, what is it called? Custom vertex. Down the custom vertex stream. So I'm feeding a ran here I'll show you what that looks like actually. So stable random x is being fed down text chord 0 dot z. So since I'm pulling from uv0 which is another way of saying text coordinate 0, uh, I'm pulling out of the z component of that. That's getting multiplied by a vector 2, 3, and 8, and that gets added into um, my pan coordinates, basically. Um, and that basically scrambles the UVs for my texture for each particle, so they each start at a different position. So those get added together. I use those UVs as the UVs for my main texture and my normal map. My main texture, I add 0 0.49 which brings up its lowest value to just below 0 0.5, which is going to matter as we feed that into Opacity Clip. Opacity Clip will take any value that is below 0 0.5 and set it to 0. And any number above 0 0.5 will go to 1. Let me compile this so you can see this fade in and out. So uh, I have an alpha threshold value in my mask. My mask is this mask from below, and my alpha threshold value I currently have set to a uh, sine wave that's going up and down um, and going into this alpha threshold value. In the actual shader that I use in my particle system, it will be the alpha value out of my vertex color, which is the particle's color. So this will use my particle's alpha from now on. Anyway, uh, that goes into Opacity Clip, and that is what controls uh, which pixels are on and which pixels are off in this shader. I also have a smooth step that borrows from the same math, uh, and this tints the color of the pixel. So I don't know how well you can see. Let me make it a little bigger. You can see that as we get closer to the edge, I fade it closer to black. Um, that's what this multiply is doing. This multiply takes my particles color, uh, takes my particles color here from the vertex color, multiplies it by a material specified base color, and those get combined here, and multiplied by my uh, my edge lighting softness value. Um, smooth step is a function that uh, takes a given range and sets it and remaps it to a zero to one range, which is very helpful a lot of the time. Um, and uh, in this case, I'm using it to 
find a high point and a low point uh, for my edge value uh, that I can use to color just the edges of this texture. Um, almost done. Uh, I also have this math for my normal map. Um, so for my normal map, uh, it comes in fairly simply. Oop, I need to let I need to let Unity know that I imported a normal map and not a regular texture. So I select the normal map, come up here to texture type, and say normal map and apply that. Unity will take just a second to think about it. Um, but now it comes in correctly as one of my, uh, my texture should come in correctly now. And that will make my lighting a little bit smoother on my particles because my numbers are now in the right range for being remapped. Anyway, um, yeah, and then I have to have a metallic and a gloss value uh, in order to use the PBR shader in uh, Shader Forge. Uh, and my transmission value controls how bright the backside of the particles are when they're not on the lit side. So I'm going to set that to 0 0.5 so we get a little bit of shadow. Um, and that's about it. Uh, I, yeah, I think that's everything. I have that uh, map into both transmission and light wrapping. Uh, and I think that's it. It's not a crazy complicated shader. Um, certainly writable by hand. I've written stuff like this before, but uh, I like working in Shader Forge because it is much faster to get ideas out. Anyway, the particular material that I'm using is this Effects Blood Threshold. Um, it has a pan value here, as you might have seen. Um, tile 1 in 1, uh, 0 0.5 for the edge lighting softness, uh, has a transmission of 1, a metallic of 0, gloss of 0 0.8, and a red base color. So let me select that. And uh, I'm going to lock this on screen so I don't actually take it off. Um, here you can see I'm passing a tangent, which is important for normal mapping and a stable random, which makes it so that my particles have different texture positions when they come in. Um, you might actually want to turn your panning down. So if I turn my panning to zero, they'll still get their random offset, but they won't swim left or right, which might be desirable in most circumstances, actually. But you may also want just a little bit of um, swim to your textures so that they, they feel a little bit randomized. Whoops. It's a little bit of swim. Anyway, um, this is just bursting very, very few particles. It's between five and eight. Uh, yeah. Uh, this gets multiplied in. Um, you can take a second look at my settings, but they're really... You can take a second and look at my settings, but there's really nothing special about them. Um, if you want them to be thinner, you can set your start alpha to be a bit lower, uh, and that will make them a little bit dottier. Um, but yeah, that's, that's basically all there is to this blood. Um, yeah, they get uh, some color over life that fades them out and tints them darker over their lifetime. They get a size over life that makes them grow uh, quickly and then stop. Well, grow quickly and then ease in to an end value. Um, and then I have rotation over lifetime that starts them rotating pretty quickly at the beginning of their life and then very quickly uh, curtail that. Yeah, that's about it. Um, it's not a crazy complicated shader. It's also um, like really usable. Like I, I use, I've used this in several games. Um, and yeah, I hope this is useful. Um, and it's not a very long process to get this texture 
uh, working and you can use the same process for many many kinds of textures with just a little bit of uh, editing to the shader you can make it work for translucent stuff too this is totally opaque as it's just a clip out shader um, but it would not be particularly hard to uh, uh, use this as opacity data instead of opacity clip data and go to my sh uh, where is it my blending instead of opaque use this alpha blended and now it is translucent so if I compile that now you can see you can see through it um, same basic idea it's still nothing particularly fancy going on anyway uh, you can also edit it over here and change its color and stuff um, make a nice water splash if you just do a little bit of editing the color um, yeah, you may want to fake your lighting a little bit more than I am here to do nice looking water, throw a couple extra speculars in there, but I think this looks pretty good. Maybe make it a gross alien goo. Who knows? Alright, that's about it for this demo. Check back in for the next video, in which I'll cover some of the techniques for combining textures. I'm Ryan Gatz, thanks for watching.